This is Sports Federation. If you've just tuned in, you've missed the first segment of the show where we chatted about judo in Afrikaans. Nogal, I had a few <laughs> moments there in Afrikaans. This is the show where we talk about a range of different codes of sport. You can catch our repeats tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and also each segment will be on YouTube within the next week or two. We now move our attention to something a bit more different. We're chatting drummies and cheerleading. Ms. Janini Rasmus, you are? I'm well, a little bit under the weather, but otherwise fine, thank you. <laughs> good, good. Explain to us what is this wonderful code of sport that you're involved in? Because a lot of people have never heard of it or even understand it for that matter. It's a very unique sports code. Um, it was established in 1981. It started as the Western Province Drum Majorettes Association. And recently it was changed to the Western Province Majorettes and Cheerleading Association, where we incorporated cheerleading into the sports code. Um, the cheerleaders have gone from strength to strength over the last few years, and I predict that one of these days we're going to have more cheerleading teams than, than majorette teams. So, uh, y often you see, Janine, uh, cheerleaders are those people that stand at the side of a rugby field in the, in the American version. Is it the same kind of thing, or explain the difference? It's more or less the same sort of display that they do. Uh, this is obviously more competitive. Uh, we do actually get invited to attend events such as um, recently we did the F&B 12 kilometer run. Yes. Um, some of our majorette teams also actually do. I saw um, them there. Yes, yes. So um, it it's adds a little bit of glamour to an event. We were recently also asked to attend a bazaar, for example, in September. So the community likes to involve us. And so, so you, you go around and you just do these dances, jump up and down with pom-poms, <laughs> is, that, is that the gist of it? It's or am I oversimplifying it? No, it's a bit more technical. Okay, um, we it. have four different uh, categories. Um, the co-ed, the, uh, the partner stunts, you have your cheerleading. So it's, uh, you have different score sheets um, that you evaluate each uh, display on. Um, our uh, Cape Town teams have actually done exceptionally well, um, considering we only have two coaches currently. <laughs> but we have well uh, the, the number of teams have actually increased and um, they're, they're very competitive. Let me just take a step back. You said co-ed. Yes. I.e. <laughs> male and female. That's correct, yes. That's more our tertiary. Well, we do have primary as well. A very cute little boy and a, a little girl. They are adorable. They actually won gold last year at nationals. Nice. They, they did very well. Um, we do have some boys in our sport, uh, but the majority is female. Because that's a stereotype right there that you've broken. That, yes. that only ma uh, ladies would participate yeah, in correct. this kind of uh, sport. That's correct. Now, we, we have about 10 males that participate from primary to tertiary. And they, you know, they're very good at their tumbling. And they've actually participated uh, abroad in the U.S. as well. Nice. Yes. Uh, do you find, uh, from a cheerleading uh, po point of view, that some of these people have a gymnastics background? Would it help? Yes, definitely. Um, it's uh, definitely uh, um, you need to separate the two codes, but it does help if you are able to do flick flacks and uh, the general uh, tumbling, jumping, that type of thing. And you have to be flexible, obviously, and not be scared of heights. <laughs> that may help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you just tuned in, we're chatting to Janine Erasmus from the drums and cheerleading. Majorettes and Jump cheerleading. Jump majorettes. <laughs> or majorettes. Majorettes and name cheerleading. Change, name yes, change. Yes, name change. <laughs> so. So tell us about the major rates component. We've now spoken a bit about the, the cheerleading. Tell us about the, the major rates component. The majority of our teams, we have in total 23 affiliated teams. The majority are primary and high school teams. We do have a tertiary team though. Um, there's basically, from six years old to matric, we actually have service awards, five years, seven years, 10 years, 12 wow. years. When these girls start, they don't stop. Um, their coaches are very passionate, their parents are very passionate. And it's the cutest thing when you see these little six, seven year olds strutting their stuff in their little white boots. It really is adorable. So, so for those at home, you have these uh, young girls and young guys now. Yes in these little uh, uniforms and someone leading throwing a stick a white stick it's a I mace think? it's a mace yes. uh, is that what it's called it's called a mace yes. okay so wh why would someone be walking in front with a mace Wh that would what's be the, the leader. Yeah, okay. Explain the leader that is us. a separate uh, uh, subcategory. She gets judged on her own. Oh. It's, uh, you, you get groups of which you get your flag group, your POM non prop, and your throwing prop groups. Sure, this is that's this gets complicated. Uh, very complicated. <laughs> the, the, that's a small group of girls, and the display is also slightly shorter. Then you get your small drill, which is more the military type of drill, and then you get your large drill, which is a longer version of the small drill. And in the small drill and the large drill, you have your leader. She gets judged as a separate category, and then you have three other score sheets where your artistic, uh, Im Im artistic impression is uh, judged, your performance technique, and your group performance. With group performance, you have to 
divide your subgroups. You've got to do your uh, sub uh, sub leaders and your squad, for example. So it gets very technical. I'm an adjudicator as well. So do you have <laughs> a degree for this? Because it sounds like you, need, <laughs> you definitely need you, one. You definitely need to write a, an exam um, sure. to qualify, and yeah. Samca is quite strict on that, because obviously you know you, you need to make sure that you able to adjudicate accurately to mm. give each athlete and team their due. So they're very strict on making sure that you know what you're looking for. Are you looking at your formations? Are you listening to the audio? Are they marching in step? Checking all that type of thing, yes. And, and that's an important part that people that we haven't even touched on is the fact that you need to have music accompaniment yes and your uniform yes tell us a bit about that very expensive uniform sometimes just the the headdress which is called the busby mm -hmm. um you're looking at about thirty thousand for a team what i have personally <laughs> stitched busbies when i was a uniform mom it's it's a lot of work um but obviously you want your team to look the best yes and as, as much glitz as possible and obviously the white boots and we, we do uniform check, so it's very strict. You go for uniform check before you march to make sure the dress length, everything is perfect. Is it at that level? Yes, definitely. They're very wow. strict. We have marshals that attend to that. Uh, we have about 30 um, adjudicators and marshals on any given competition day to make sure that we're judging everything properly. The sound equipment, is we pay quite a bit of that for that every, every weekend because it has to be at a certain level so that everybody's music is equal um, we give them specific instructions as to how to load their music. Your variety of music is judged there. Are they interpreting the type of music? Are they going slow with slow music, fast with fast music? All that comes into play when you're adjudicating. My word, I'm tired <laughs> just listening to all of this. <laughs> now, in, in terms of music selection, yes. um, is, is it the coach's prerogative to choose whatever kind of music or is there a set, a set genre that needs to be followed? No, you can, you can have a theme to your music. You can have um, fast techno music, you can have slow tec uh, classical music, whatever goes with your display, whatever enhances your display. So if you do a ripple, you have ripple music, for example. So next time I'll bring you a video and then sure. I'll show you all of this. This is very technical. <laughs> very. Now, and, and in terms of that, do you have a theme when you do a, um, a competition as an example, like you mentioned, like a ripple, or is it an open competition? No. It's your choice what you want you to do. You can do whatever you want to do. There are certain things you look at, for example, any team that's marching, you're going to look at how they create their formations. Are they using this, the, the six different methods that they're supposed to be using? Okay. On your performance technique, for example, are they all marching in step on the left leg or the right leg? Are they all marching? Because some of the teams don't lift their legs. I mean, it is a drill after all, so you need to lift your legs. Are they using the whole field or are they staying in the middle of the field? So there's lots of different things that you need to look at provided which given score sheet you are on. If you've just tuned in, we are <laughs> chatting major reds and cheerleading and there are so many technicalities related to this sport. I never knew it even existed in terms of a technical. I knew the sport existed, mm. but um, it, it's just another level. Uh, one or often thinks that you just see these trompe poppies as yeah. they're called in Afrikaans, throwing these white sticks walking around with yeah. these little funny hats on the head. One of your, one of your um, uh, score sheets is for example, your group performance. There you'll judge variety. Are they going down on the ground? Are they jumping in the air? What are they doing with that flag? Are they just swinging it around their head or are they using it behind their back? Variety is very, very important. Also combination. Are they doing different leg movement movements while they're doing the flag movements? That's very important, especially when you go to nationals because the teams in Hutting tend to do a lot of combination movements. Our nationals is from the 2nd of July to the 10th of July at Germiston. And 14 of our teams will be participating. So I'm very excited nice. to see how they perform. And, and, and a lot of these teams are club-based, I'm assuming? Um, we do have clubs, although the majority are uh, school teams. We are trying to convert more to clubs because obviously you can have more team members. It is a very expensive sport um, because we're not a mainstream sport like your cricket, your rugby. We do tend to have a bit of funding issues yes. because obviously the, the parents have to then pay because the school's mm. not always too able to, to assist. So um, we do try to get funding from Department of Culture and Sport, that type of thing. But private funding, you don't always get because, as I said, you know, the marketing opportunity is not always there. So Be it's, not, it's not like you can put uh, any name on the back of, uh, of, 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 the, of the uniform. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. You, ca you can't, for example, have a wine farm sponsor a school sport <laughs> sure. that, or a tobacco, you yes. know, and those are your, normally your big sponsors. So mm. we, we are looking at ne for next year um, to get some sponsors on board to, you know, for like skincare products, that type of thing, which is more female related. Yes. Um, so hopefully, yeah, some of our corporate sponsors will come in. 
And you, you mentioned that it's a, an expensive sport. Mm -hmm. What would it cost for a parent to kit out a youngster to participate a in uniform, a competition? A uniform can go anywhere up to about 4,000 Rand. Per event? Uh, no, 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 per, for, for a team. Okay. So uh, an athlete can pay 4,000 Rand for the boots, the dress, the mace, the headdress. That's just one person. And the person. flag, yes, that's one person. Wow. And some teams have 50 athletes. So it does get expensive. Do, uh, uh, you mentioned earlier that, that you sat and you, and you, you sewed <laughs> yourself. Yes. I, is that what happens generally within yes. the code of sport? That parents uh, jump in and, and, and participate at all levels? We do try to get parents involved because, um, because you don't get the funding. You can't actually give it to a company or a, a factory to make for you. Mm unless you have the funds available. So you literally, you order the, the shell and you order the feathers and you sit and you stitch it yourself. They're called uniform moms. They scrub boots at four in the morning at nationals. They sew athletes into uniforms before they go on. It's, it's quite a stressful situation when, you, when your athlete suddenly doesn't fit in their uniform. But um, yeah, the, the uniforms can be, can be quite hectic. How often do you have competitions or, or displays? We have had eight competitions this year. Um, we try to do as many as possible, obviously, to prepare our athletes for the competitive environment for nationals. Yes. Um, it is obviously a costly affair, so we will most likely only have around six next year if we have the funding. But um, we have two Western Province uh, Champion of Champions events, which are very um, uh, elegant. That's where, that's where the girls get to strut, strut their stuff. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we we've have our groups and um, uh, small drill. And then we have our cheerleading and large draw. And then at the last one, we have our ceremony where we do our prize giving, hand out the service awards, say thank you to the coaches and the adjudicators, all that type of thing. If you've just tuned in, we're chatting to Danini Erasmus from the Majorettes and Cheerleading Association, which <laughs> I didn't know there's so much work involved in this. It can get very intricate. We have 19 athletes also going to Croatia in September. We are affiliated to the Majorette World Federation and um, they are going over to attend the event in September. I think it's from the 22nd to the 25th. I will also be going, so I'm nice. very excited, yes. Um, there's a nice cross-pollination of disciplines. Um, we had Jelko Badovic, who came to uh, South Africa to do a site visit because uh, Saskok has awarded us um, the uh, hosting of the Major Red World Federation 2018 in Cape Town. Nice. So that's very exciting, yes. So we're working on that for the next two years. <laughs> That's going to be exciting. And Very. And I mean, how, how big is um, Majorettes across the world? They bring about 2,000 athletes. Just for, We're hoping to have 20 countries okay. attending our event. So it's, it's very big. It's from teams from every country, and then it's 200 athletes in a team. So it's, it gets quite wow. big. <laughs> yes. and, and, and our level at international, how, how do we compare? I mean, you just mentioned that you're going to Croatia. Yes. What um, are our chances? We actually have brought back gold and silver and bronze. So we, we do very well. Uh, obviously, our selection process is very strict. Hmm. Samco will come down, run trials, and they will only select the best of the best. And it's, it's actually, it's not just waving a flag or throwing a mace, you need the skills, you need the posture, you need the discipline. So those athletes are really our stars and we're very excited to see what they're gonna do in Croatia. Janine, now this is not an individual sport. So when you choose, a t when you choose someone to go represent South Africa, mm. is it the team that goes or no. is it individuals? And together they make up a team, how does it work? No, it's, uh, uh, together they will make up a team. Right. You go for trials, depending on age groups, for example, you need to have your Western Province co colors firstly, then you get to go for trials and um, they select, as I said, the best of the best on that day. Okay. And that 19 of our athletes from Western uh, Province is going. So that's very exciting. And how big is the, the, the team? Is that the whole team? So it's No, no, no. There's from Gauteng, from all the okay. provinces, we'll all get together, practice and go over as a team. So how big is this team that's going over to Croatia? I think it's 92 athletes, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Yes, but we do have um, uh, teams that are obviously bigger. We are still growing the sport. Yes. So hopefully by the time 2018 comes, we will also have 200 athletes to send. And, and that's across different age categories and across different disciplines within yes. majorettes and cheerleading. That's correct. For example, in 2018, when it's here, we get to do 91 displays. So we'll have trios, we'll have duels. Um, there are different athletes that will be doing different displays. Okay. And, and uh, sure. <laughs> I'm still uh, speechless at the amount of intricate detail that one needs to put in to be part of this yes and often we we, we take it for granted in terms of equipment yes. um, how much equipment do you need for this i mean you, you, you mentioned about the mace but externally 
previously was called drum major it's so yes. is there, there's a lot of people that or is that still part of it where someone walks with a drum or not they that's why part of why we changed the name because they do associate having a drum yes and beating the drum as you march um in large law we used to be ha uh, have um uh, 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 special props you were allowed to do that but we've actually done away with that also because of cost issues so you're allowed to use a certain number of flags you're allowed to use a dual, which is a mace head on each end, and your mace, and then obviously your um, leader will have her mace. Yes. So there's a certain number of props you're allowed on the field, and then uh, you can vary your flags. You have boxes, the girls will go, they'll put the old flag in, they'll take the new flag out, and start the new section of their display. Okay. So, and that's why it's changed its name because now you've got the mu the music, electronic musical accompaniment as opposed that's to the correct. physical drumming. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm exhausted just listening to all of this. You need to come and watch. <laughs> Definitely. How do people find out more about your wonderful sport? We do advertise on a radio media. Um, we hope to come on to the show a couple more times. I'll bring you a drummy so that you can see how they look and that type of yes, thing. Yes, please. Yes. Are um, you on Facebook, Twitter, all of yes, those Yes, we do have details? a Facebook page. We are on Twitter. We do have a PRO that handles all of that. Do you, uh, do you know the handle of the Twitter, the Facebook? What's the Facebook page? Uh, it's, it's WPMCA. Just uh, type in WPMCA okay. and it'll pop up. Lovely. Not a problem. Janine Erasmus, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. Let's take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll be chatting basketball. See you now.